This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 221, Vengeful Souls Seeking Death. Now you understand why the light in the secret room is so weak. It's to reduce the probability of being discovered. When you kicked the wall just now, you were actually only a dozen centimeters away from the secret door. Thinking of the probability of you accidentally hitting it, I lowered the height of the secret door a little. He he he, you're already very smart, but it's a pity that you're a little lacking. I hope that in the next round, you'll perform even better. After the live streamer finished explaining, Bipson was already stunned. The netizens in the live stream room were in an uproar, exclaiming praises endlessly. Death judge, you've created a secret chamber to kill someone. The live streamer's psychology is too awesome. You can think of everything. Why are you so awesome? There's simply no one else. This time, it's really a test of your logical reasoning ability. I realize that the live streamer is becoming more and more handsome. This fellow, he was just a little short. I'm afraid he's already regretting it to death. He was just a hair's breadth away from success. A perfect miss. Ha. Huh. Regarding this design, the netizens could not find a single flaw. Every aspect of the design was very outstanding. It tested both logical reasoning ability and the mind of the torturer. Unfortunately, he did not have the confidence. This was why he missed the chance to escape. This level of control was able to clearly play with people's minds. The streamer was indeed worthy of being an expert in psychology. Winning without a move and having a move was the essence of being awesome. This IQ was truly a killing blow. Clap clap clap. A round of applause sounded. The drunkard's face was filled with praise. This secret chamber's design is really perfect. It's been a long time since I've met such a powerful opponent. What I thought or didn't think of, you've already done it. I'll give you 100 points for this design of yours. I'm not afraid of your pride. The policeman standing behind him was speechless. Don't forget your identity. You're a policeman. Your stance isn't right. Ross's face was as gloomy as the bottom of a pot. His fists were clenched so tightly that they were white and blue. Fudge. He could even think of such an anti-human design. Monica realized that if she were at the scene, she would definitely have been able to find a way to crack it. Thinking of this, Ross looked in her direction and noticed that her expression was cold and her eyes were filled with killing intent. At this moment, the most devastated person was Bipson. He stared blankly at the cracked wall, wishing that he could beat himself to death. At that time, he had already discovered the ash, so why didn't he think twice? It would only take him two to three minutes to figure out the crux of the matter. The hateful thing was that he actually gave up. He foolishly ran to another place to look for the so-called secret door, and the real exit was more than 10 centimeters below his feet. At this time, his entire body was like black charcoal, standing in place. Every breath he took, there was a piercing pain that made him grimace in pain. Why? Why was this so? Bipson let out a turbid breath. He did not want to stay in this sad place any longer. He walked towards the small door in the wall. In the end, he took too big a step, causing his burned lower muscles to tear. It made him suck in a breath of cold air. Fudge, damn it, Death Inquisitor. I'm not done with you. He slowly stretched out his foot. The sole of his foot was dark, like a large pig's foot. The shoe and the flesh had been connected together, and there was blood continuously flowing out from it. Damn it, if I can get out of here alive, I will cut you into a thousand pieces. I swear. Then, Bipson gritted his teeth and kicked the small door hard. He easily broke the bricks outside and entered the second stage. The room was very bright, and in the middle was a large medical box. At this moment, Jack's cold voice suddenly sounded, giving Bipson a fright. Congratulations on passing the first stage. There's a medical box in front of you. Go over and open it. Bipson learned to be cautious. He looked around and saw that other than the medical box, the surroundings were empty. This was not a secret room either, because there was a half-open door in front of him. He walked forward and opened the box. 
There was an injection inside. Your current situation is critical. This is an adrenal injection. It can shrink your blood vessels and increase your immunity. In your current state, I'm afraid you will die before you reach the end. Of course, you can choose to ignore it. The choice is in your hands. I will give you one minute to consider. Bipson snorted. What was there to consider? With his current condition, it was hard to say if he could even last half an hour. Was he going to wait for death here? He took the injection and directly stabbed it into the vein of his left hand. He pushed all the medicine in the syringe into it and then let out a sigh of relief. He chose to inject it into the vein. It was faster and more convenient. The effect could be seen in two minutes and could last for more than half an hour. Then, Jack's voice sounded again. Very good. Next is the hunting game. You are currently at the bottom of a maze. What you need to do is to run as fast as you can and find a room with a humanoid shape. Entering the room is considered safe. I will hunt you down from behind. Do you still remember my iron claws? Once I catch you, I will not hesitate to open up four wounds on your back. Only then will it be interesting. As soon as he said that, the lights in the room went out. What followed was the sound of a woman crying. It was sad and miserable. Bipson's body trembled. Wasn't that Jenny's voice? In the distance, he seemed to see a woman walking towards him naked. Her bloody eyes were glowing with green light. She waved her five claws and said in a mournful voice, Give me back my eyes. My lower body hurts so much. I'm going to kill you. Ah, you're still a ghost. Don't, don't kill me. He turned around. There were four women standing in four different directions. Some had long hair, some had long tongues, and some had no heads. This horrifying scene directly made Bipson roar. His eyes burst, and he ran towards the small door in a panic. Ah, uh, ghost. Don't kill me. The horrifying and shrill voice also made the netizens in the live broadcast room tremble. That is Jenny's voice. Could it be that this guy saw a ghost and was so scared? Who knows? But the voice just now should have been edited by the death judge. Fudge, I thought I saw a ghost. I'm in the business of video editing. I'm telling you as someone who has experienced it before. This is the streamer's post-production sound effect, but it's done very well. There are almost no flaws. No matter what the outcome was, the netizens were really shocked. Bipson almost saw God on the spot. His nerves had long collapsed into a line and he was pulled tightly. Suddenly, he caught a glimpse of Jenny, who was already dead. There was also the sound of thunder behind him. It seemed that there were many people crawling behind him. That scene scared him to death. Ah, ghost. Bipson, who was frightened to death, ran towards the door. As soon as he opened the door, he saw the face of a pit doll. There was still blood coming out of it. He was so scared that his eyes suddenly popped out. They were densely packed with blood and his mouth was wide open. However, he could not make any sound. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 222, Strange Exit, Life or Death. Behind the door was the Death Inquisitor, who was waiting for him. A pair of eerie and terrifying eyes were staring at him. He was grinning with a horrified smile. Pfft. Without waiting for him to react, he cut open his back. Five clear claw marks could be seen clearly. Fresh blood was oozing out, dyeing the charred skin around him red. Ah. Bipson screamed. He ignored the pain in his body and ran away. Jack did not get up to chase after him. A bloodthirsty smile appeared on his face. He pulled his iron claws to the wall, leaving five white claw marks. They let out a sharp, sizzling sound, like the screams of a demon, or the sound of a demon from hell. They traveled far along the tunnel. Seeing this scene, the netizens in the live broadcast room were all in an uproar. Oh my god, the Death Inquisitor has appeared. Cool, the Death Inquisitor is mighty and domineering. I want to give birth to a monkey for you. I love you. 
He he. I'm not afraid to tell everyone that I like that iron hand. It's used to climb the peak of a woman. Hiss, just thinking about it is exciting. The netizens were so excited that their faces turned red. This was the first time the Death Inquisitor had appeared in front of everyone. From the virtual back to the real world, they were all in an uproar. Everyone was in an uproar. At this moment, in the Zero Degree Crime Squad. The few people who were watching the live broadcast stood up in shock. What did they see? The Death Inquisitor, who they had been dreaming about, had actually appeared. Moreover, this time was different from the past. The previous few times, he had only revealed a terrifying mask. But this time, they actually saw a complete figure. Ross was so excited that he could not suppress it. He immediately looked at the drunkard and said, immediately draw a map on the spot and calculate the approximate height and body size of the Death Inquisitor. Isn't this your strong point? Monica's eyes also moved slightly. The more information she obtained from him, the more strategic she would be. As the saying went, know yourself and know your enemy, and you will win every battle. If one wanted to defeat the enemy, one had to understand the enemy in all aspects. This was the motto of her life when she was studying psychology. Anthony also clenched his fists and said fiercely, Fudge, after fighting for so long, we have finally seen the exact height of this guy. We have narrowed the range, and we are one step closer to success. Hearing this, Judy was also brimming with a happy smile, but her imagination was extraordinary. Wow, the Death Inquisitor is so tall. Look at the distance. It's about 185 meters. As soon as she finished speaking, everyone's eyes turned to her. The atmosphere suddenly fell silent. Judy, who realized that something was wrong, blinked and said, why are you all looking at me? Did I say something wrong? They were already used to her wild imagination. Ross sighed and did not say anything. The people, who were immersed in joy, were turned back to their original state by the drunkard's words, he shook his head and said, this is not his real height. The angle of the light, the height of the wall, and the influence of the surrounding environment are variables to determining a person's height. Moreover, even with Bibson as a reference, the Death Inquisitor should be around 180 to 200, but no one can be sure whether he is wearing a disguise or not. Hearing this, everyone's passion was extinguished. Bibson ran far away in one breath. The lights in the passage were lit one by one until he ran to the deepest level. He did not know where he was, but he would walk if there was a way. His back was burning. He touched it with his hand. The bright red blood stained his hand. He did not dare to stop because he had a feeling that there was a pair of cold eyes staring at him in the darkness behind him. At this moment, Jack walked out of the house. He glanced at the fresh blood on his claws and sneered. Then, the lights above his head went out. His figure disappeared and merged with the darkness. His cold eyes looked at the end of the tunnel. The next time I see you, I will break your tendons and legs so that you cannot run anymore. Jack who had a mocking smile on his face, turned around and left toward the end of the maze. At this moment, Bibson turned a corner and saw a door with a human mark carved on it. His eyes lit up. He remembered that the Death Inquisitor had said that as long as he could find the room with the human mark and enter it, he would be safe. Fudge, I finally found it. Bibson looked behind him. It was pitch black behind him and nothing could be seen. Perhaps the Death Inquisitor was hiding in the dark, ready to give him a fatal blow at any time. He no longer hesitated. He pushed open the door and entered in a flash. This room was different from the other rooms. It looked much smaller, and the light was not sufficient. It was a little dim. He looked around. There was nothing there. There was a human-shaped mark on the wall in front of him. He carefully walked over and looked out through the crack. Then, he noticed. The lights. The lights of the city, the tall buildings, the traffic, the people, the trees. An uncontrollable excitement surrounded him. Bibson felt as if he was being blessed by the goddess of luck. This level was so simple. I did it. I finally did it. His heart was beating faster and faster. Every cell in his body was active. 
This was his yearning for freedom and the desire for success. As the camera zoomed in, the netizens in the live broadcast room saw it too. Wasn't the scenery outside the city? Could it be that this pervert, the perverted killer who had slaughtered five female celebrities, had just gotten through the game and won in the end? Will he be able to escape and continue killing people? This round can't be that simple, right? What did the Death Inquisitor think? Fudge, this is too simple. This demon can't really succeed in the end, right? I think you're thinking too much. Since the Death Judge designed that round that way, he must have his own ideas. We don't need to think so much. We just need to be quiet and eat melon. That's right. It's been such a long time. That time, the criminal was able to escape punishment. This might be the calm before the storm. Just as the netizens were worried, Ross let out a sigh of relief. The victim's escape meant that the Death Inquisitor had failed. To them, this could be considered a form of encouragement. It meant that the Death Inquisitor was not a god and could not achieve perfection. It seems that the Death Inquisitor really miscalculated this time. It's also a blow to him. Ross said faintly. Monica, who was staring at the live broadcast room, shook her head and said, I feel that the Death Inquisitor deliberately led him there. It seems that this is the key to the game. Ross did not think much of it. As you can see, after passing through this human-shaped hole, Bipson will be free. Monica narrowed her eyes and did not say anything. Ross still agreed with Monica's analysis. Bipson had already lost his way. If it were not for the Death Inquisitor's surprise attack, Bipson would not have followed the lights all the way there. It was as if this was a meticulously arranged and meticulously designed trap. Fudge, this is going to be a good show to watch. Judy said again. Ross raised his eyebrows and tried to calm down his bulging chest. He was used to this excitement, but he knew this could lead to another disappointment. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 223, the location of the live broadcast was exposed. At this time, Willie had yet to send any news, and Ross was already itching for more. Willie could not help but clench the communication device in his hand and shout into I, Willie, are you fudging asleep? Is there still no progress? How long had it been? If it had been any later, everyone would have died. Listening to the roar coming from the device, Willie pouted. Team leader, the Death Inquisitor is too cunning. We haven't found anything yet, and we are frantically searching for it. I don't want to know how crazy it is. I just want to see results. Speed up. We have to find the live broadcast location this time. After shouting, Ross hung up the equipment and connected to the drunkard's channel. Drunkard, how is it on your side? Have you found any clues? At this time, the drunkard had finished his graffiti. There were dark passages with 9 turns and 18 bends. The surroundings were deep and dark. With just a glance, the policeman behind him felt nervous. He felt his heart tremble as his body turned cold. Is there no clue on Willie's side? Why are you asking when you know? Oh right, how is the human-shaped passage? Can Bipson escape? The drunkard broke down immediately. Why is he asking me everything? Where is his brain? Fudge, why are you asking me everything? Are you a pig? It's obviously a trap. It was set up from the beginning. If I'm not wrong, he had already thought of the foreshadowing from the first stage. The burning of Bibson had scorched his skin. And the injection of adrenaline, do you think the Death Eye Inquisitor was planning to treat him kindly? I think that was prepared for the third stage. If I'm not wrong, the Death Inquisitor is preparing to skin Bob's son alive. Hearing the words from the drunkard, Ross felt as if his entire body was in an ice cellar. Fudge. This is going to be too bloody. And how did he do it? Could there be barbs in there? Ross was shocked. Just as he was thinking, the drunkard's words came again, causing him to have an orgasm on the spot. I think I know where the live broadcast is. Where? Ross's tone started to tremble. I have to say, the death judge is very smart and very confident. 
At first, I thought that his live broadcast was in the basement, but I never thought that he would choose a cemetery. Moreover, those winding passages are the graves of the cemetery. Moreover, he left us an hourglass to tell us that the live broadcast is only 10 minutes away from Bipson's nest. Further guessing, it is in the small forest in the west. Ha! Ah. What a powerful and admirable opponent. After the drunkard finished speaking, Ross roared at Willie. Willie, go to the woods to the west of Bipson's house immediately. Hurry. Everyone, return to the woods immediately. Follow them quickly. Go. At this time, Bipson could not suppress the excitement in his heart. The joy of freedom enveloped him. Bipson's face darkened. He swore that when he came out, he would return the humiliation he had suffered under the hands of the Death Inquisitor a thousand times over. Death Inquisitor. Ha. Huh. You miscalculated this time. Just wait and see, I will never let you off. What a bull, shoot, death game this is. It's all bull, shoot, dot. Bipson's confidence soared, and he felt his entire body filled with power. In the face of his ridicule, Jack's voice sounded off, but it was still low and full of gloom. You were able to reach the final stage, which was indeed beyond my expectations. This stage is called Blooming Life. The human-shaped cave on the wall leads directly to the outside world. After successfully passing through, you will obtain the victory of this live broadcast. You have about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, a second explosion of natural gas will occur, and the entire cave will collapse. Whether you will live or die, it's all up to you. Bipson smiled sinisterly and said, it's out of your expectations. Stop acting cool. You should be regretting it now. You didn't kill me just now. You set your own rules, but in the end, it restricted you instead. Ha! Huh. This is what you get for eating your own medicine. When I get out, I will definitely cut you into a thousand pieces to vent the hatred in my heart. It's useless for you to regret it now. Not only you, but everyone watching your live broadcast. The corner of his mouth revealed a fearful smile. He grinned, revealing his sharp yellow teeth. This arrogant expression was tolerated by everyone, and it directly ignited the anger in the live broadcast room. Fudge, you're still there. There's no limit to acting cool. I'm talking about people like you. I'll be waiting for you. I think you fainted from playing the game. How dare you make such a bold statement? You must be an idiot. There's no need for you to do it. We can all just drown you in the Pacific Ocean. Stop dreaming. I can't stand his arrogant expression. The death judge won't let him survive. It would be a waste of air for scum like him to live. If he dies, it would be a waste of land. Choosing to explode on the spot is his greatest contribution to society. The netizens were furious. They wished they could crawl into the hole and beat him to death. At this moment, Bipson was already walking towards the human-shaped hole. He spread his arms and aimed at the spot and directly stuck in. Just now, he had carefully observed that there were some barbs on the edge of the hole. There was no problem in going in. Once he came out, the barbs would hook and then pierce into his skin. Bipson despised the death judge in his heart. With this level of skill, he still wanted to play him to death. He had escaped. Once he gets out, he would be free. Only a fool would come back. What was the point of such a design? Bipson did not know how long the hole was, but he had no way out. In front of him was freedom, and behind him was the long line of barbed wires. He could only move forward. Ha! Ah. I'm here. Freedom. He was now singing happily. He was experiencing freedom, yearning for freedom, and moving in the direction of freedom. Outside was the air of freedom. There were mountains and rivers, women with money, and countless female celebrities. Bipson had already imagined the scene of countless mannequins stacked in the basement. Ah, how wonderful. At this moment, the netizens in the live broadcast room became anxious. Fudge, he went in. It can't be that he succeeded just like that. Death judge, he went in. He's going to escape. Damn it, it can't be. 
Do we really want to let this murderous demon continue to wreak havoc in the human world? Don't worry. The death judge has his own set of rules. He won't let him go so easily. Even if he's really lucky enough to get out, we won't let him go either, right? My friends, let's find a solution. The netizens raise their voices in anger. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Ross was also staring at the live broadcast. At this moment, Bipson had already entered. His eyes were fixed on the screen. Was it an escape at the end of the cave, or was it a trap as the drunkard had said? Ross couldn't sit still anymore, but he couldn't leave then because he had to command the dispatch. Anthony, contact the Nyaya District Police Station, Red River Police Station, and Tianchen Police Station immediately. Ask them to send reinforcements. Yes. Loggins, inform the 9th Squadron to send reinforcements immediately. Yes. Following orders, the entire Zero Major Crimes Unit was mobilized. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 224, Skin Bipson Alive. All the helicopters rushed to the small courtyard where Bipson was. At this time, the drunkard observed the surrounding environment, then lay on the ground and looked at the tire tracks that had left. He frowned, then stood up and was at a loss. Sure enough, the clues that the Death Inquisitor gave us before were all false, misleading us, said the drunkard. Willie raised his eyelids and waved his hand. What should we do? Where should we search? He's like a hunter now, covering up all the tracks. We have no choice but to search. The drunkard looked at the small forest to the west. Willie followed his line of sight and also looked at the small forest. It was green and endless. There were only a dozen of them in such a large forest. How could they search through a large area? The drunkard also noticed this awkward reality and said, with Bipson's hut as the center, fan out in a 60-degree search. It could only be like this for now. Willie nodded and brought a dozen police officers from various angles towards the center. Once they discovered the situation, they would report back at any time. Following that, a dozen Special Forces soldiers rushed into the forest like cheetahs. Their actions were crisp and swift, like the wind. Ross looked at the scene and his expression became solemn. Whether or not he could find the live broadcast location and capture the Death Inquisitor would depend on the results of this battle. At this moment, Bipson, who was at the entrance of the human-shaped cave, was getting smaller and smaller as he walked forward. He could no longer move. It was as if he was stuck inside, and his entire body could not move at all. What should he do? Bipson's neck was pulled so long that he could see the light in front of him. Fudge, Death Inquisitor. Fudge your whole family. It was too painful. It was too depressing. F asterisk CK, it's so long. It's so painful and depressing. I feel like I'm about to be squeezed to death. I feel like the space is getting smaller and smaller. At this moment, the camera was focused on Bipson's vision. Looking at the surroundings that were getting smaller and smaller, as well as the scene of red wine and green wine in the distance, he was very eager. He could only choose to continue to walk ahead. Compared to all these, what kind of dark environment and what kind of oppressive feeling would await him? What he desired more was the outside world. Ha! Huh. The hole is getting smaller and smaller. Will he be directly squeezed to death inside? Fortunately, looking at his excited and anxious appearance, I think his heart is about to collapse. I suddenly have a premonition that this might be the Death Inquisitor's trap. Do you believe it or not? It's hard to say. The hole looks a little far, but it's still okay to squirm gently. The netizens crazily sent out bullet messages. At this time, in the small forest, more than a dozen police cars whistled over. Behind them, there were even longer versions of the Lincoln police cars. Reinforcements had arrived. They whistled over like a ferocious beast. Out of the three police stations, a total of 60 people had arrived. Adding the number of people from the special police, the total number had reached one. Ross immediately gave an order. The Naya District Police Station will search from the west to the east, and the Red River Police Station will search from the north to the south. 
the special police will fan out from the center of the small house. The Tianchen police station will be responsible for the communication equipment. Stabilize the rear. Yes. Yes. Everyone was dispatched, and like a fierce army, they advanced toward the target location. Ross had been staring at the live broadcast, and at this moment, a scream from Bipson caught his attention. Right now, he was stuck at the entrance of the cave, unable to move at all. He could not move forward, nor could he retreat. He stood awkwardly on the spot. When the audience in the live broadcast saw this, they could not help but laugh out loud. This fool. Let's see what you can do now. I am now certain that this is the trap set by the Death Inquisitor. Huh, this fool will starve to death in there. I apologize. I should not have doubted the great Death Inquisitor. I actually had doubts. My brain is really broken. Alright, the Death Judge is handsome and powerful anyway. Brothers, if we don't give him a wave of gifts now, when will we? At this moment, Bipson was already in a dilemma. He was sure that the hole was shrinking continuously. His entire body felt like it was being squeezed by the air. He felt waves of pain. This feeling was too uncomfortable. Sob 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 sob, it's so uncomfortable. Death Inquisitor, I hate you to death. He began to curse loudly, feeling extremely conflicted in his heart. Should I retreat? However, there were barbs behind him, and he could only watch as the endless scenery lingered in front of him. However, he was helpless and could not move. It was like a nightmare in a dream, destroying his will. Fudge, fudge, fudge. He could not retreat either. When it was time to retreat, the underground palace would collapse. He felt a headache coming on. Suddenly, an idea flashed through his mind. That's right, I can take a step back. I just need to cut off a little bit of my skin and flesh. This way, I can continue to dig deeper. Feeling that this method was feasible, Bipson was as happy as a child. A smile bloomed on his face again. Just like that, since the flesh was already charred, a little more and a little less wouldn't be a problem. What was there to be afraid of if there were no firewood left? Death Inquisitor, if you want to trap me, you can do it in your next life. His cold laughter echoed throughout the tunnel. At that moment, Jack, who had blended into the darkness, had a teasing smile on his face before it disappeared. Time was of the essence. After making up his mind, he began to move. Bipson first moved back a little, and his skin and flesh hung on the groove, causing waves of pain. Hiss. He sucked in a breath of cold air and continued to move forward, tearing off his skin and flesh bit by bit. When the burnt flesh and fresh flesh were forcibly separated, there was a sizzling sound. Bipson was very familiar with this sound because it was the same sound when he was peeling off the skin. He gritted his teeth and resisted the feeling of tearing. The blood stained the passage and gave off a strong smell of blood. After wriggling a few steps like this, he moved forward again. He tried to take a few steps forward, and sure enough, it was much smoother than before, and there was much less resistance. But soon, Bipson could not walk anymore, and he was stuck. Fudge. He cursed angrily. Damn it, looks like I have to go back and stab some more flesh. So, Bipson squirmed back again. Sizzle sizzle sizzle. The flesh on his body was pulled down. What was different was that now, it was not worth his back. Even his chest and arms felt different pressure. The barbs were deeply embedded in the flesh, and the tearing pain was thousands of times greater than before, Bipson's teeth were about to crack. He felt as if his entire body had been dismembered. Ah! Fudge! Bipson screamed in pain. Every nerve in his body had been triggered. They trembled and made a tense sound, as if they had been pulled countless times. He could not hold on any longer, but the charm of freedom not far away was constantly attracting his attention. At this moment it was as if his entire body was filled with strength again, and he was once again advancing towards his goal. The exit was getting closer and closer. He felt freedom beckoning to him. I want to go out. I must go out. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, 
the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 225, A Special Welcome Gift. Bibson pulled his body and walked forward. He kept cheering himself up, but this time, his neck was stuck tight. His arms, legs, and even his whole body was stuck. Ah, bastard, let me out. Bibson's heart was in a frenzy, and his anger surged. He didn't choose to retreat. He was going to move forward. The walls of the cave rubbed against his skin like torn flesh. Bibson's expression was ferocious. He grimaced in pain, but he did not care. At this moment, only freedom remained in his heart. After rubbing for a while, he felt that the passage had become smoother. He was excited, but at the same time, he tried even harder to move forward. The cave and trance felt smooth, as if he had touched lubricant. At the same time, a hundred people in the forest were holding strong torches and frantically searching. Ross stared at the live broadcast room, his face full of anxiety. Currently, only Bibson's moans could be heard in the live broadcast room, and no one could see his specific situation at all. There was also no news from Willie's side, which made Ross extremely anxious. Just when everyone was at a loss, there was a movement from Willie's side. Found it. Someone suddenly shouted in the forest. Team leader, we found the live broadcast site. Willie shouted as he walked towards the live broadcast location. Ross was also shocked when he heard this. Then, the live broadcast was transmitted. He saw a few policemen pulling at the obstacles. There was a big pit below. There was an oil painting in the pit. The oil painting depicted the world in the city. Behind the painting was an oil lamp. In front of it was a wall, however, this human-shaped cave looked different from the one in the live broadcast room. Its neck was slightly longer, and its other necks and arms looked slightly narrower. Ross looked at the live broadcast room, and the camera had already turned to the outside. Fudge, the police actually found it. This cave looks different from the one in the live broadcast room. Will Bibson get stuck inside directly? I don't know. It's better if he gets stuck. The scumbag pervert should have died a long time ago. It's definitely going to be a big show next. Let's wait and see. We have to be good actors. Just as the netizens were discussing intensely, a special police officer at the scene said loudly, he's out. He's out. In an instant, everyone's eyes were directed at the cave entrance. Under the incandescent lamp, a bloody and fleshy human squirmed out from the hole. At the sight of Bibson, everyone felt nauseous. Their stomachs churned and some even vomited all over the floor. The netizens in the live broadcast room shouted, what an eyesore. Fudge, I vomited on my keyboard. I even vomited out the dinner I had the previous night. I vomited on the mechanical keyboard I just bought. It's broken now, obviously. The thousands of netizens were all shocked. Even the local police and special police officers were pale-faced, and their mouths were sore. They saw that Bibson's entire body was sticky, and the flesh on his neck had been completely peeled off, leaving only a layer of skin and flesh connected. All the blood vessels were clearly visible. Looking at his torso, intestines, and liver connected to the veins, it seemed like an x-ray had been done on the spot, the skin and flesh on his entire body were separated, especially his head. There was no hair, nose, lips, and teeth. Under the illumination of the light, he looked like an upright skull. This scene, in the long dark night, even though there were so many people, scared the people. Those who witnessed it felt a cold chill shoot up to the sky from under their feet. I succeeded. I'm finally on my own. Ha! Huh. Bibson laughed wildly. But it hurts. He glanced at his feet. His eyeballs detached from his eye sockets and fell to the ground. Bobson reached out to grab them and accidentally caught a glimpse of his own body. Ah! Looking at his body that was blurry and even covered in white bones, Bibson let out a blood-curdling scream. My flesh, my flesh! Ah, damn Death Inquisitor! He stretched out his hand to grab it, but his skin was cut open. As a result, the intestines fell to the ground like a broken system. Immediately after, his beating heart suddenly stopped. His other eyeball also flew out, 
and he directly fell to the ground dead. Save him quickly. Willie shouted. The drunkard rolled his eyes at him and said, he's already dead. What's the point of saving him? If it wasn't for that adrenaline shot, he would have died in the cave long ago. All his potential had been squeezed out. This was the result he wanted to see. Everyone, disperse. It was over. Boom. A muffled sound came from afar. The ground exploded and a large part of the soil collapsed. Immediately, fresh blood splattered like blood splashing in the air. All the police officers were not spared. They retreated in shock. The drunkard was also sprayed all over his face. He frowned slightly and a fishy smell came from him. Fudge. Wah. There were a few more people who ran not far away and vomited. The drunkard reached out and wiped his face. The fishy smell was sticky. Fudge. Everyone, don't panic. This is the second explosion of natural gas. Obviously, this was deliberately designed by the death judge. The death judge had already expected that we would find this place. Firstly, he wanted to destroy the evidence. Secondly, this is the gift he gave me for my first meeting. Hehe, <laughs> I will return the favor next time. Listening to the drunkard's voice, many netizens were completely convinced. This scheme was really divine. It was linked to one another, logical and precise. He even used a scheme to provoke the police. It was really perfect. The death judge is indeed awesome. The death judge is indeed the best. He is able to strategize and win from thousands of miles away. Ha! Huh. There's no problem. Brothers, let us send the death judge a wave of gifts. Let us return the favor and give the streamer a like. And so, the netizens who had been beaten up immediately sent out a wave of gifts. They sent planes, ships, and crowns. The bullet comments immediately flooded the screen. And those who had entered the death livestream the first time were deeply shocked. Regardless of whether it was the scene or the exciting scenes, they were deeply hooked in their hearts. What made them even more impressed was the wisdom and logical reasoning ability of the streamer. To them, it was simply amazing. They were stunned. The live streamer who had never felt so exciting, the real scene, and the refreshing experience, were many times better than the movie theater. Fudge, the live streamer is too awesome. I will definitely pursue this live streamer in the future. This scene is too exciting. It's real, awesome. At this moment, I can't use words to express my admiration. I can only say F asterisk CK to replace it. Great death judge, you are an eternal god. Jack looked at everyone's comments and smiled. Then, his gaze fell on the drunkard. Obviously, he was different from the people around him. Whether it was his tone, words, or attitude, he was different from ordinary people. Regardless of whether the outcome was good or bad, he seemed to be enjoying all of this. From all of this, he did not look like a policeman. He also appeared calm and appreciative. Jack knew that this kind of person had the fewest flaws, and his thinking was also extraordinary. As expected of a drunkard killer, and as expected of a person who could write a criminal psychological analysis. He was not a bad opponent. I look forward to fighting with you and I will be waiting for your return. A hint of appreciation appeared in Jack's eyes. Following that, Jack's voice sounded in the live broadcast room. Welcome to my live broadcast. This live broadcast has ended. We'll see you in the next episode. Then, the screen turned black. The live broadcast was closed. Ding. The design of this death broadcast has been successfully designed. This death broadcast has a cut of $12,000. Evaluating the level of this death broadcast. After evaluating the city, this death rating is excellent plus 3. Obtain 2,300 death points. No scene obtained for the time being. Fuck. Jack's eyes fell on the roll of bills. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 226, The Mighty Death Inquisitor. In fact, his desire for money was not very great. What he needed was his own strength. 
but who would complain about having too much money? After all, he needed to eat, drink, and spend the money he earned without thinking about running out of it because he earned it. He was relieved. Jack smiled contentedly. Meanwhile, Ross's face was gloomy. Looking at the messy environment at the scene and the various police officers who were trying hard to hold back their anger, a fit of invisible anger rose in his heart. He could no longer hold it in. Willie, Loggins, and Anthony looked at the blood and flesh on the ground. Their faces were pale, and they lowered their heads to suppress the impulse of their stomachs churning. Hart recalled the entire plot in his heart. This design was too awesome. A small amount of adrenaline and the desire to survive could make Bibson obediently peel off all the blood and flesh in his body. This ability to control another human's mind had reached a terrifying level. Judy was feeling even more unbearable. She directly occupied the entire bathroom and vomited non-stop. If there was someone on the scene who could still remain calm, it was Monica, who was sitting silently in her chair. She stared at the closed live broadcast room with a myriad of thoughts in her mind. Sure enough, the Death Inquisitor did not disappoint. After a moment of silence, Ross suddenly raised his head and turned to Willie. Although the scene of the death has collapsed, the Death Inquisitor may still be at the scene or lurking somewhere nearby. Immediately start a blanket search of the small forest. We must find him. Yes. Number two, number three, and number four are patrolling in the air. Report immediately if you find any suspicious people. Understood. The drunkard stayed where he was and walked forward. He touched the texture of the wall and muttered to himself, I have to say, this prop is really awesome. Captain Luo, find an expert to look at this wall. Maybe we'll get something. Ross immediately understood what he meant. If this thing was not in the tomb, then they could follow this line and find clues about the Death Inquisitor. Thus, they could find the business channel and track down his tracks. Okay. Ross replied. Then, the search at the scene turned up nothing. Not long after, Ross, Monica, and Judy arrived at the scene of the crime. Seeing the traces of blood and flesh on the ground, Monica frowned. Judy had almost vomited out her stomach before, but this time, Seeing the scene, the stimulation became even more intense, and she ran to another place and vomited wildly. Ross ordered someone to clean up the blood. This time, he turned around and picked up a gray-haired old man from an off-road vehicle. He was a professor in the Department of Archaeology at Harvard University. He had studied archaeology for decades, and he had an extremely rich experience in texture and archaeology. Professor Harson, sorry to bother you so late. The gray-haired old man smiled and waved his hand. If there really is a wall that you can't see, you don't have to say anything. If there isn't, just do as you see fit. How are you going to send me back? Ross wanted to say something, but he was interrupted by Harson. Where is the stone? Take me there quickly. Seeing the old man's eagerness, Ross simply agreed. He knew that the old man had been immersed in this industry for decades and had a very deep love for it. Other than that, he was not interested in anything else. The group also arrived at the small forest, the location of the live broadcast. At this time, the drunkard was lying in a small pit. He touched the wall of an unknown material and was drowsy. Harson excitedly walked forward. With the assistance of his subordinate, he put on gloves and took out a magnifying glass to observe. He revealed an excited expression, and he said, looking at the degree of decay of this material, it must have been buried here for at least a thousand years. However, the human-shaped hole in the middle is a little strange. I have never heard of such a burial form. I still have to go back and study it before I can give you my opinion. Harson's words were like a sledgehammer that struck at the bottom of everyone's hearts. Fudge, this Death Inquisitor was too powerful. The Death Inquisitor had easily designed a killing tool that even the archaeology professor had not heard about. Was the Death Inquisitor even human? Ross and the others were so shocked by this that they also widened their eyes. Even the drunkard narrowed his eyes and revealed an interested look. They did not feel good at all. Early in the morning, sunlight shone in through the window. The sun was blazing like fire. Jack narrowed his eyes and listened to his body. 
He felt that he had slept very soundly that day. He opened his phone to take a look. There were more than a dozen push messages, all about the live broadcast last night. The serial star murder case was solved. The Death Inquisitor made another move, shocking the world. The police and the Death Inquisitor raced, fighting until the last moment, but they were still one step away, and they were teased at the scene. A mysterious stone was found at the live broadcast location. The archaeologists found that it had existed for thousands of years, and it might be an extraterrestrial object. As for the human-shaped hole in the middle, some experts analyzed that it might be a form of burial, and the specific situation was unknown. Jack's lips curled up slightly. What extraterrestrial object? This was just an ordinary stone. Don't ask. If you asked, what in the world couldn't be done by the system? Directly turning on the system and creating on the spot would be convenient and quick. Wouldn't that be beautiful? After looking at the news and glancing at the comments, Jack put down his phone and began to wash up. Just as he was brushing his teeth, the doorbell rang. When he opened the door, he saw that Aisha's exquisite little face was filled with a happy smile. She had put on light makeup that day. The combination of a light innocence and charm revealed a different kind of beauty. She was already so charming at such a young age. In another two years, she would probably be a person who would bring disaster to the country and the people. Jack wanted to say something, but he heard Aisha say something in a somewhat anxious tone. I don't have time to explain. This is your breakfast. If you have time in the afternoon, pick me up from school. If you don't have time, then forget it. Then, she hurriedly ran out. Jack was dumbfounded. Why was she in such a hurry? He looked at the time and smiled helplessly. This little girl was going to be late. Jack smiled and returned to the washroom to wash up. Then, he opened the lunchbox. It was still the same sumptuous and delicious food from before. It was still the familiar taste. It was Jennifer's handiwork. After eating his fill, Jack began his day's work. He had just finished driving around a residential area when a call came from Qingha Rainbow Bridge came. After Jack picked it up, the speaker on the other end said, Brother Jia, you must not come here today. Jack frowned slightly and said, What's wrong? Did something happen? No. He paused for a moment and then said in a low voice, Jack, two old men and grandmothers who live alone came here early in the morning. They are widowed. Are they going to introduce their daughters to you? They are going to set you up on a blind date. I have already seen them. They are not beautiful and are not even as beautiful as goddess Aisha. You must not come here. Jack couldn't help but laugh when he heard that. A blind date? What era was this? A blind date? And there were two of them at the start. Who could bear with that? Even if they were pretty, he couldn't go. Would he be incomplete without a woman? Aisha and Jennifer were different. Such women could easily get into bed with a flick of their fingers. They even needed a blind date just to get a man. These were methods that only ordinary people used. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 227, was all a ploy. Someone as handsome and dashing as him didn't need to go through that. All right. I got it. I won't go over there. If they're willing to wait, just let them wait. Maybe when the two of them are talking happily, there will be sparks of love. If there's anything else you need, give me a call. All right, brother Jia, you're absolutely right. Maybe you can really set up a marriage. After that, Jack hung up the phone. It seemed that his charm was getting stronger. He had already made a name for himself in the four neighborhoods. Even the elderly were mobilized. In a few more months, what else could they think of? Jack did not dare to imagine. When the time came, he would discuss it with Rachel and try to keep a low profile. To be on the safe side, he first made a call to the other two neighborhoods. However, it was not safe for him to go there. The entire afternoon was calm and peaceful. Nothing special happened. On a new day, as the Star Jenny case came to an end, the popularity gradually cooled down. Through this incident, 
the fans of the star also learned about their character. Their idol had changed from a jade girl to a lustful girl, breaking the hearts of many fans. This had a great impact on the fans. For a time, the enthusiasm of the fans for chasing the star had decreased a lot. However, the passion did not fade because they all turned to the death judge. After a day, the popularity did not decrease and occupied the top trending spot on Twitter. Whether it was Weibo, Twitter, or the top trending spots on Baidu, all of them were filled with topics about the Death Inquisitor. It even surpassed the national affair issues. As the matter developed, the name of the Death Inquisitor was pushed to another peak. For a time, the glory was boundless. Even elementary school students knew about the existence of the Death Inquisitor. In the dark world, with a death god who walked on the edge of the law, he controlled justice and punished evil. At 5.30, Jack arrived at the middle school and stood at the school gate, waiting for Aisha. The students who came in and out of the school were all talking about the Death Inquisitor. This surprised Jack a little. He didn't expect the Death Judge to be that popular. Seeing the great ambition of pushing the live broadcast of Death to the world, he had already succeeded by a big step. Peter, you really recorded the live broadcast of Death last night. Of course, I can't lie to you. Can you send me a copy? My idol is the Death Inquisitor. Sure, give me one US dollar. Fudge, you're making too much profit. Don't forget that we're best friends. How about this, you help me with my homework tonight, and I'll send it to you. Also, every time I record a live broadcast, I'll share it with you. What do you think? And after you watch it, I guarantee that your IQ will increase by a large margin. To be honest, your math is too bad. Listening to the conversation between the two middle school students, Jack raised his eyelids. Watching a live broadcast could increase one's IQ. Why didn't I know that? Jack then sent a message to Aisha. Northgate. Aisha replied immediately. In a short while, Jack saw Aisha's figure from afar. Although there were many other students around, Aisha stood out. Her slim figure and exquisite face among the other regular-looking students was like a bright moon in the sky. It was impossible for her not to attract attention. It was too conspicuous. Too outstanding. Jack lowered the car window and waved at Aisha. Aisha smiled and sat in the passenger seat. Thank you for picking me up. To express my gratitude, I'll treat you to a meal at my house. Hee <laughs> hee. When Jack heard this, he was dumbfounded. He felt like she was so full of tricks. He pretended not to know. What's good at home? Let's eat outside. It's still convenient. Aisha pouted her lips and a faint fragrance came from her sexy red lips. You're in luck this time. My mom is cooking at home. It's a big meal. Let's go. Jack smiled. Since school had just ended, he was surrounded by cars and students, so he drove slowly. When he left the crowd, he began to speed up. Chatty and curious, Aisha spoke again. She was puzzled. Hey, what group is this? Why am I in it? After a while, she spoke again. King's Game Group? Who dragged me in? I don't remember adding it. Aisha checked the chat history. When she found out that the group owner was the king, she issued two missions. The first mission was to tattoo the word, King, on her body. The second mission was to watch a horror movie at 3 o'clock in the early morning. What's all this nonsense? Who dragged me in? It's boring, Aisha complained and directly clicked to leave the group. Jack looked at Aisha's angry look. Her little face was red and she looked very cute. At this time, at the black elementary school on the other side of the square. It was the end of the school day. The school was surrounded by primary school students. Some of them were picked up by their parents, and some were standing in front of the bus stop, waiting for the bus. On the bus stop at the school gate, a few primary school students were waiting patiently. Little Ford, didn't your mother come to pick you up? My mother is working overtime today. I've told my mother that I'm a little man now. I've already grown up. I want to go back home by myself from now on. 
My parents are working overtime today too. I want to be a little man. Recently, I've discovered that my father already has a lot of white hair. I'll ride the car home by myself. I won't let my parents work hard for me anymore. Yeah, me too. I must work hard and repay my parents. Hee <laughs> hee. My mother said the same thing. Just as they were talking, a roaring Rolls Royce suddenly rushed over from afar and charged straight at them. Along the way, a few primary school students couldn't dodge in time. They were pushed into the air by the huge force and flipped three and a half times consecutively, and they fell heavily to the ground. Ah! Quickly dodge! The surrounding adults shouted at the few primary school students at the bus stop. However, the Rolls Royce was too fast. Like a flash of lightning, it directly knocked the few primary school students in front of the bus stop more than 10 meters away. They rolled more than 10 times on the road. Fresh blood splattered everywhere, dragging a long bloody trail on the straight road. The huge impact even broke the bus stop, causing everyone to roar at the scene. Panic, screams, and fear. They did not expect that there would be a car directly barging in at the school gate, which was surrounded by students. It was such a huge mess. It was directly loaded onto the curb next to it and fled into the distance. There was also a long bloody trail on the clean road, which was shocking. At this time, some students who had escaped shouted at the car, Ford, Ford. The Rolls Royce sped away, leaving the scene in a mess. The school, which was originally full of laughter, suddenly became a living hell. The injured students were lying on the ground in a mess. Some of them were groaning with blood all over their bodies, and some were lying on the ground motionlessly. The rest of the students looked at this scene with pale faces and were all scared silly. A little girl was crying. She fell to the ground and cried as she looked in the direction where the Rolls Royce had sped off. She softly murmured, Ford. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 228, The Crazy Rolls Royce. The camera zoomed in, and the escaping Rolls Royce was running wildly on the road. Faint traces of blood could be seen on the ground. Ah, help. Mommy, sob sob sob, mommy. Under his car, a boy's voice became softer and softer, and his originally lively eyes slowly became dim until they were completely dead. The man in the car behind him looked at the Rolls Royce in front and his gaze trembled. There seems to be a child under the car in front. A woman sat on the passenger seat next to him. She looked at him seriously and let out an ear-piercing scream. The little boy under the car was already badly mutilated and fell from the car. Due to the speed of the car, it still drew a long distance on the road, then, they stopped. They immediately got out of the car to check. The man from the BYD car wanted to send him to the hospital, but he was afraid of causing secondary harm, so he was hesitant. Soon, the place was filled with people. Looking at the miserable little boy, they were all furious. They didn't know which god allowed such a crazy thing. Make way. I'm a doctor. Please make way. At this moment, a woman in her twenties walked out from the crowd. She sounded like an emergency doctor from New York City Hospital who happened to be passing by. Everyone quickly made way. Daisy looked at the little boy in front of her. Half of his face was gone, revealing the flesh and blood inside. His neck was pulled to the side weakly. His arms and thighs were all badly mutilated from the friction. When she flipped open his back, the bloody flesh and blood were all blurry, his blood vessels were all broken, and a large amount of mud, dust, and stones stained the flesh and blood. At this moment, Daisy saw the little boy open his mouth and quickly put her ear close to it. She only heard him call out his mother. Mommy. Then, there was no more breath. Ah. The people around looked at the little boy with red eyes. They hugged their children tightly, and some of them were already crying. They could not bear to watch this sad scene any longer. He was dead. Daisy's eyes were also red. Ah, god damn it. Who did this? Who the fudge is so crazy? I want to teach him a lesson. It's a Rolls Royce that escaped. There are still a few injured children at the school. Doctor, 
quickly go and take a look. When Daisy heard this, she quickly ran over. She was wearing high heels, so she couldn't move fast. She took off her high heels and ran on the road with her fair little feet. Stepping on the gravel-covered road, the sun was still shining brightly and the temperature was scorching. However, she did not care at all. Her mind was full of worry for the injured students. At this moment, there were many people around the school. There were some who called the police and some who called the emergency numbers. Ah, who's going to save these poor children? Who the hell did this to such an innocent young child? Daisy came to the scene and saw the injured children lying on the ground, moaning helplessly. She quickly took off her coat and bandaged one of the student's wounds, but there were too many injured children and the ambulance had not arrived yet. Her figure shuttled between the students with an anxious expression. When the crowd saw this, they all took off their clothes and tore them into strips to bandage the wounds of the elementary school students. After a simple check of the situation, there were more than 10 elementary school students who were seriously injured. There were five students who died, and there was one student who was on the verge of death. His breathing was weak, and Daisy was pressing tightly on his artery to prevent him from losing too much blood. Hold on, don't worry. Sister will not let anything happen to you. Stay strong. Hold on. Who? Ha. Who? Ha. Daisy gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. At this time, four ambulances came, and more than ten medical staff came down to deal with the scene at a rapid pace. Following closely behind, four police cars also came whistling over. After seeing the situation at the scene, they immediately reported it to headquarters. The situation was serious, and the situation at the scene was terrible. The owner of the car escaped. Daisy, why are you here? A doctor from the hospital asked when he saw Daisy, who was in the midst of an emergency treatment. I just happened to pass by. Quick, help him. His condition is urgent. Quickly send him to the hospital. Then, Daisy and the others carried the little boy into the ambulance. Three police cars opened the way, and four ambulances followed closely behind. They pulled the alarm and rushed to the People's Hospital of New York City. The Palace on Cloud Summit was the most luxurious and romantic villa in New York City. Boom! With a loud sound, the iron gate of the villa was knocked open, and a bumpy Rolls Royce stopped in the courtyard. It was covered in blood. The few people who came out of the villa were all stunned when they saw the scene in front of them. What's going on? Arnold? An enchanting beauty rushed forward in a panic. She was dressed in gold and silver and was covered in luxury goods. She was Sheila, the lover of one of New York City's wealthy men. Her father was the deputy director of the New York City Prosecutor's Office. It could be said that she had money and power. She stood at a height that others could never reach in their entire lives. At this moment, a young man in his twenties got out of the car. He came down shakily. His gaze was a little unfocused. He almost tripped and fell to the ground. Seeing him like this, Vark was furious. He said coldly, you little brat, did you smoke again? I'll beat you to death, you waste. Before he could go forward, he was stopped by Sheila. She looked at her son lovingly and said gently, son, where did you go today? What happened? Why is there blood on the front of the car? Sheila's heart ached for her son to the extreme. Usually, she could not even bear to scold him. It could be said that she doted on him to the bone. Arnold grinned and said in a delirious state, I killed many demons today. They pounced on me with bared fangs and brandished claws, but I killed them all. Ha! Huh. They all deserve to die. I saved the world. I'm a god. Trash. You do nothing all day but suck useless things. Tell me clearly, did you kill someone? Vark slapped him away. Sheila was shocked. She pounced on Arnold and found that he had been knocked unconscious. Sheila panicked. Her beautiful eyes were about to fly out. Vark, did you grow up to hit my son like that? Ah. Vark looked at Sheila coldly and said, you, you're protecting him like that. Sooner or later, you'll be the cause of his downfall. What are you afraid of? 
We have money. Besides, who cares if they are dead or not? We'll just pay them. Why did you have to hit him so hard? Sheila said in a strange tone. In her heart, there was nothing in this world that money could not do. If it failed, it was because the money was not enough. Vark suppressed his surging anger and angrily turned around to return to his house. Sheila came to the front of the car and looked at the sky in the distance. She muttered, son, don't worry. Even if you hit someone, mom will help you settle it. I won't let anything happen to you. Unfortunately, what she did not know was that this time was different from the other situations. At the same time, at the New York City hospital, the staff and authorities had heard that there was a huge vehicular incident. It had already alarmed the state government. The leaders had given the green light to go all out to save the child's life. The doctors were all busy. The boy who had been dragged for 100 meters had already died. They were doing their best to save the boy whose chest had been injured. It's really a miracle that this boy has been able to hold on until now. His chest was compressed, and six of his ribs were fractured. One was inserted into his lungs, and two into his liver. It's indeed a miracle of life that he could hold on until now. At this moment, a young nurse next to him said, when I arrived, I saw Dr. Daisy treating him. So it's her. No wonder. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, The Adjudicator of Death Novel. Chapter 229, Ambiguous Moments. Some of the nurses who had just arrived did not know about Daisy's reputation, and they were surprised that even a doctor at the level of a department director praised her highly. Who exactly was she? Prepare for the operation. At this moment, the department director said nothing. The other operating rooms were also busy carrying out intensive resuscitation. Compared to the boy with a chest injury, the other children's injuries were not too serious. They were already out of danger after their surgeries. The most important thing was the five dead boys. Outside the operating room, the parents who had received the news rushed over, hugging their children and crying bitterly. Child, open your eyes and look at your mother. My child, you even said that you would get first place in the next exam for your mother to see. How can you just leave your mother and leave on your own? Oh God, why are you so cruel to take away my child? Ah. Uh. At this moment, the four parents were all immersed in pain and suffering, as if they could not accept this reality. In a quiet corner, a blonde woman in her forties hugged the little boy tightly in her arms. She did not cry or shout. There was no expression on her face. She stared blankly at Ford's half-rubbed cheek, tears flowing down like a thread. Ford, my child, mommy will bring you home. The reporters who had rushed over after receiving the message did not rush forward. They were all immersed in a sorrowful atmosphere. They only took a photo from a distance, paired it with bone-chilling words, and then released it. Parting in life and death, sending a person to his death. Was this a loss of morality or a distortion of human nature? The escapees have to come out to apologize and take responsibility. When the report was published, everyone who saw this scene silently shed tears. The scene outside the operating room was like a sharp knife, deeply piercing into everyone's hearts. May the dead rest in peace, Almighty God. Please bless them with an early reincarnation. The lives that have been lost, rest in peace. The world will return justice to you. Rest in peace. The comments section was filled with prayers. They hoped that the dead would be released and that the murderer would be severely punished. Jack brought Aisha to the blue sunset coast and went upstairs. As soon as he entered the door, Jack smelled the aroma of rice. The sound of cooking could be heard from the kitchen. Jennifer was probably still busy. Mom, we're back, Aisha said. Sit down for a while. It'll be ready soon. Jennifer's gentle voice came from the kitchen. Aisha put down her bag and looked at Jack, who seemed to be not used to it. She smiled evilly and said, why? Are you afraid that my mom and I will eat you up when you come to my house? Hearing Aisha's words, Jack's face became unnatural. He could not help but think of the dream he had before. In the dream, Jennifer's butt was sticking out, and her two snow-white thighs were separated, while he was. Jack didn't think about it anymore. 
If it were someone else in his place, especially after that kind of dream, it would be extra difficult to be in that female's house while her daughter looked at him with watery eyes. He sighed. It was a little too evil. Ahem, it's not time to eat yet. Do you know how to do your homework? Jack laughed. Ah. Uh. Aisha obviously didn't expect him to do this. Her red lips were slightly pursed. She reluctantly took out her homework and began to write. Jack walked into the kitchen and looked at the busy Jennifer. She was wearing a set of home clothes today. When she saw Jack come in, she revealed a warm smile. She was like a little woman waiting for her husband to come home. Her smile was very sweet and beautiful. Her temperament was still so attractive. The fragrance of her body entered Jack's nose slightly. Looking at her white neck, charming collarbone, and the fullness of her chest, Jack felt a rush of heat on his body, especially since she was wearing a pair of short shorts. Her snow-white thighs were sparkling with a white luster under the light. They were delicate and as white as snow. Jennifer seemed to feel it at this moment. Her jade-like cheeks gradually became rosy, as if they were dyed with a red sunset glow. Under his gaze, she could not help but feel her entire body go soft, hot, and powerless. What was even more indescribable was that she actually began to feel it. There were traces of water on her lower body. It was moist, and her red lips subconsciously opened slightly, letting out a slight moan. Jack's expression did not change, but Jennifer lowered her head shyly, not daring to look into Jack's eyes. It was too embarrassing. She actually. Actually. Until now, she still felt as if there was an electric current all over her body. It was soft and numb, and her long legs were slightly crossed, wanting to stop the itch on her lower body. The atmosphere suddenly became a little delicate. Just when the two of them did not know how to break the awkward situation, a press release broke the ambiguous atmosphere. Jack took out his cell phone and swiped it with his finger. The expression on his face became more and more gloomy. Jennifer also noticed that something was wrong and asked, what's wrong? He did not say anything and handed the cell phone to Jennifer. Seeing such a sad and cold scene, the tragedy outside the school, the sadness in the operating room, and the escaping Rolls Royce, a wave of sadness rose in his heart. Jack's eyes flashed with a cold light. Jennifer was not in the mood to cook, and the three of them lost their appetite to eat. They simply ate a little and then ended the meal. Thank you for dinner. Jack said goodbye to Jennifer and Aisha. The moment he turned around, his eyes burst with an unprecedented coldness. At this time, another message was sent. Jack opened it and saw the news of the perpetrator. It was clearly written that the perpetrator was suffering from a serious mental disorder. While on the road, he suddenly fell ill and crashed into a primary school student at the entrance. This caused a tragedy and was now under the control of the police. Mental disorder? Jack sneered. Everyone liked to use mental disorders as an excuse for their crimes. He hoped that the law would be fair. Otherwise, no one should blame him for being merciless. Even if there was a mental disorder, one could not be fearless. Jack believed that the law should excuse no one. At this moment, on Twitter, there were countless netizens discussing intensely. Even if the perpetrator had a mental disorder, he still killed people. He destroyed another man's happy family. What kind of law is this? If you have a mental disorder, why are you able to drive? What kind of guardianship responsibility do you have? What kind of bull shoot is that? Does that mean that I can also kill people? If I say that I have a mental disorder, I can hide it from the world. Darn, it's so infuriating. I can't even watch it anymore. Jack glanced at the comments. No matter what, he was relieved that the perpetrator was being controlled. It was up to the court to decide. After finishing his cigarette, Jack said hello to Harry as he walked past the duty room and went back to his apartment. At 9 p.m., New York City news outlets reported on the elementary school incident. The perpetrator had been arrested and had gone to the hospital for testing. It was confirmed that the perpetrator was suffering from a serious intermittent mental disorder. It was said that the results would be released to the public later. At the same time, the police also released a video of the scene. 
When the netizens saw the video, their eyes widened, and their anger erupted uncontrollably. Is this something that mental patients were capable of? This is a massacre that dehumanized people. People were furious. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 230, There Was Someone Else. Fudge. God damn that bastard. What's wrong with those children? Why? Why are people so cruel? I can't stand it. Even if he's mentally ill, I suggest that he be executed. Because of him, many families are broken, and many people are sad. Right, execute this sagebrush to seek justice for those innocent children. I feel that once the private distribution process is initiated, this matter will be reduced to a small matter. In the end, it will not be settled. Just by looking at that car, I can tell that the family of the perpetrator is not simple. Spend more money and make some arrangements. Once the trend of this matter dies down, it will be out in a few years. I firmly request the Death Inquisitor to come out and execute this perpetrator. Jack scanned through the comments. Under normal circumstances, if the murderer surrendered under fair and just circumstances, he would not make a move. After all, there were too many crimes in the world, and he could not control them. However, if there was something fishy behind this, then it was not necessarily so. However, to do things according to the law, there had to be some procedures. From the investigation and collection of evidence to the conclusion of the case, the case would be handed over to the judiciary for sentencing. The process would take about a year. In other words, this case might be dormant and the criminal might not be sentenced for a year. Jack closed the comment section and opened the video. The angle of the video was taken from the back, and the speed of the car was very fast. However, the car was covered with black film, so only the car was captured. No one knew the license plate number. At this moment, a Weibo post caught his attention. The user ID of the person with the username, Sex and the Clouds, posted a picture of the car. He was posing in front of the car, and the owner of the car seemed to be smiling. Although the picture was a little blurry, from an angle, it looked like he was smiling. Then, he opened the picture. In the picture, the car owner was indeed smiling. While Jack was carefully observing, he suddenly noticed an important detail. Fudge. This was not the same person at all. This sagebrush was covering for someone else. Fudge. Then, he opened the picture of sagebrush. There was a scar on her neck, and the real car owner, who was laughing crazily, had nothing on his neck. When he opened the Weibo again, he found that the Weibo had been deleted. It showed that he could not check it. Jack put down his phone. His sensitive sense of smell told him that his prey had appeared. Jack revealed an extremely cold smile. In that case, there was no need to wait for the trial in a year's time. The police could continue to appraise Sagebrush. I'm going to start broadcasting. His gaze was like a knife as he glanced at those miserable primary school students who were lying helplessly in their blood. Jack's gaze was like a knife as his killing intent surged. He could not wait to play a death game with the torturers. He wanted to properly design it. He he. You will definitely regret not walking into the police station. What awaits you will be extreme torture that you cannot imagine. There was an extreme coldness in Jack's gaze. At this moment, in a simple rented room, a man was fearfully looking at the blackshirt-wearing men in front of him. Their eyes were cold and their arms were frighteningly thick. There was a small mustache at the side of their mouths. They did not look like friendly people. Are you deleting the Weibo messages? The blackshirt man asked with a cold gaze. Delete. Delete, the man nodded. Where are the photos on the phone? The man in black pressed him. I'll delete it right now. So, the man opened the photo album on his phone and deleted the photos in the photo album under the man's gaze. Do you have a backup? The man in black asked coldly. I really don't. The man in black walked forward and the murderous aura that came at him scared the man in the shirt. He said, kid, don't randomly post anything on the internet if there's nothing wrong. Your actions will lead others astray, do you understand? He isn't a normal person to begin with, and he can't think like a normal person. 
His smile isn't really a smile, understand? The man nodded with a bitter smile. The fear in his heart could not be released. Panic and uncertainty, those were his feelings. Seeing that the man was so obedient, the leader of the men in black nodded his head in satisfaction. Then, he threw a thick stack of banknotes on the table. His cracked lips were smiling strangely. There's a saying that goes, a wise man submits to circumstances. You have a bright future. Just like educating a child, he touched the man in the shirt's head. This action scared the man in the shirt. He thought that the man in black was a boy. Then, the man watched the man in black disappear into the night. He hurriedly closed the door and looked at the money on the table. He did not expect that a small Weibo message would attract for men in black. Fudge. Just now, he thought that he was going to die. Bang, bang, bang. Just as the man finished cursing, there was another knock on the door. As if it was a conditioned reflex, the man jumped up and came to the door. He said carefully, who, who is it? Could it be that the person from before had returned? He carefully opened a crack in the door. At this moment, a potholed face suddenly appeared. There was bright red blood in it, like burnt dead skin. The terrifying scene made his eyes widen. Death judge, it's really you. The man in the shirt seemed to have thought of something, and his expression was excited. Jack's voice was still filled with indifference. When I went upstairs just now, I saw four men in black. They were looking for you. That's right. Do you know about the case of Tian in primary school? I took a photo from afar at that time. Later, I realized that the man was smiling. I didn't think that it was some mental disorder at all. Then, it was murder for fun or drugs. So, I posted it on Weibo to let more people or law enforcement see it. But I didn't expect that it would attract four men in black. The man liked to watch death broadcasts the most. This time, when he saw the real person, his eyes were filled with deep admiration. They asked me to delete the photo and even gave me 10,000 yuan to keep my mouth shut. They told me not to tell anyone, but I didn't know that this photo could be restored. Jack nodded. As Jack entered the house, he noticed that it was not very spacious. It was similar to his bachelor's apartment, but the smell was a little pungent, like the thick fog left by a sandstorm. Let's restore it first, Jack said. At this time, the computer was on, and the page was left on his personal Weibo. The man took out his phone. After fiddling with it for a while, the photo was successfully retrieved. Jack looked at it. As expected, there was no mole on his neck. As this photo was the original photo, after special processing techniques such as sharpening contour lines, it could maximize the clarity of the photo. This was the most favorable evidence. After transmitting the photo, Jack turned around and left. Judge, are you not going to take the $10,000? Since it's hush money, keep it. Jack smiled coldly. The man trembled and felt his whole body was covered by a cold chill. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.